I'm with you. What's going on? The monitor like crazy. And then, anyway, and then they want to do stuff, and I'm like, just a minute, guys. Okay. Just a minute. That's weird. So. Okay, we're going, going to, to call today's boardwalk committee yeah. oversight yeah. committee meeting to order. So, committee, are there any changes to the agenda today? Um, I, I noticed the action item uh, appointment of BBOC chair. Is that an election? Or what, what is that like? So, you might recall that when we first started the committee, that we had appointed councillor statute only for a short period of time until we all got settled. Right. So, that only went until March 1st or 30th or something like that. So, we just need to revisit that today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I was going to, do we revisit it now or wait for a member? If we want to keep having meetings, we still have to have a chair. Okay, well, yeah. so I won't just change it. I'll just do it. Okay. Okay, are there any other changes, questions about the agenda? Okay, seeing nothing, we can make a motion to accept the agenda. I okay. hereby make the motion to accept okay. said agenda. Okay, beyond. Yeah. All right, all those in favor? Okay, roll Agenda is accepted. Uh, that brings us to adoption of meeting minutes. There's two sets of meeting minutes this week to adopt the uh, regular BBOC meeting minutes from February 9th and the emergency meeting from February 23rd. So, if everybody had a chance to look at those, if there's no changes to them that are required, we need a motion to accept. Um, I just, um, I think I sent these in. I had um, one comment on the quite far down. Like it said, bath removal bridge should not, should still be considered by Viva. But I, I'd had more detail around that. Like I had suggested that given cost presented tonight, other options be considered, including the removal of the bridge and replacement of the corn box or something less. This may prove to be the cheapest option in moving away hazards associated with icing ramps and uh, remove need for west connection. Did you want something added to the minutes? Yeah, because all it says is removal bridge should still be considered when I'd really tie um, that in with okay. the costs. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll go to Ms. Wade first. Um, so you guys will probably notice a significant difference between the minutes that Trevor delivered and the ones that I gave. Typically, your minutes only capture the actual motions that are derived in the meeting, and that's why we're actually recording the meeting. So, Trevor, I did want to get in touch with you before today. You don't have to be typed, 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 everything, just the motions. Anybody who wants to hear about the discussion um, can view, view the video because those are super robust minutes, um, and it's kind of just a duplication of work. So, um, if you wanted to, so for example, Beth, going forward, if you wanted that brought forward and captured in the minutes, then you would make um, a motion, right? That, you know, Beth wants the committee to present to council the option for, and that's how that'll get, <clears throat> excuse me, tracked. I mean, we can add it in for the purpose of adopting these minutes as Trevor did write them. Yeah. Um, but going forward, this is way too much work for Trevor to be doing. Sweet. I was just trying to copy the previous down style. So that's awesome for me. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. So the one that I did up, Trevor, you can copy something like that going forward. Okay. So if everybody's okay with minutes, then all the discussion around them, Mr. Montclavin. Just for the record, I don't know if Jan wants his name spelled correctly, his last name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, did, I didn't know this. If it's wrong, wrong, then you can deny that it was you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> is, that in the, is that in the 23rd? 23rd. Yes. I knew it. I checked it twice and yeah, I must have gone back and changed it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay, so I'll fix that in a minute. Say yeah. anything else? Okay, so we would need a motion to uh, uh, adopt the meeting minutes as amended from someone. Yeah, okay. All those in favor? Meeting minutes for both those meetings are adopted. That brings us to our first action item, and that's uh, appointment of the BBOC chair. So, if everybody recalls back when the um, 
the committee first formed, there was a discussion around BBOC chair and uh, there would be a, uh, that I would be appointed chair temporarily until March, uh, until the committee got their feet under them. And then it could be further discussed and reviewed at that time. Um, in terms of the chair, uh, I think it's worked quite well for me to be the chair. I think the communication between the committee uh, through administration, back to council, and and uh, back and forth is, has worked quite well. So if the committee wants, I could remain in the position of chair. The other benefit of, of uh, me being in the chair position, and I talked about this at our very first meeting, according to the procedure bylaw, the chair can't make motions. And my preference is this, this is a committee of representation of citizens. So I want the citizens to be able to have the most input and participation that they can. That's one of the benefits that I see. Uh, I'm happy to continue in the chair position if that's the committee's will, but if somebody wants to take it on, I'm perfectly okay with that too. That's up to the committee. Uh, Jan? My vote or motion would be for Albert to be chair for at least the next six months, if not longer because of everything he just said, and mostly also because the chair is mostly someone who just makes sure that the meetings are running smoothly, the meetings are organized properly, and the minutes are handed out and all that stuff. And Albert has a lot of experience with that stuff. So, and I, I like that secondary thing that he said about, uh, you know, the citizens being the, the board and him being the chair. It all seems to make sense to me. And I, I really don't want us to have to do this every three months. So that's why I'm trying to put at least six months. I myself would even go for a year, but I just, I want us to move forward. And if that, if we save time by not having to vote on this every three months, then that's why I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, other in terms of committee chairs, I think with the other committees, it's, it's generally just there's an appointed chair and then anytime somebody feels that there's a want or a need to uh to uh, get a different chair in place they just bring a motion forward to uh to elect a chair is that correct yeah so for these terms of reference it says as elected by the group so that would mean that if we become unsatisfied with councillor stachik as our chair we can then and by we i mean you guys can put in a motion to have that swapped out and then additionally um, when the committee rolls turn over and they're appointed by council, at that point, a new chair will be triggered as well. So if the committee wants, there could be a time on it. It could just stay open-ended until the committee wants to make a change, uh, whatever, whatever the committee wants. Uh, so thank you for that, Jan. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak to the chair role? Nobody wants to put their name forward. Nobody wants to put someone else's name forward. Okay, I guess then I will carry on as chair for the time being. Just want to make sure, Trevor, did you get Jan's motion? Can you hear him way down there? Yeah, I can hear him just fine. Okay. Perfect. Did we, did we want the six month limit or did we just want it to be consistent as Heather was describing? Uh, no, I say let it rip until someone's unhappy. Okay, yep. Okay. Any further discussion on that? It's open ended, Miles, but if we do want to make a change, we can just make a motion. Anytime so, you just make a motion. Yeah. So, no, I think that's good. Okay. All right. Well, that doesn't need to go to a vote then. Okay. Okay. Well, that's uh, action item number one. We'll move on to discussion items. Uh, first one, sorry, first one is committee communications. Uh, I just noticed when Heather and I were making the, uh, or working on getting the, the agenda put together for this week, uh, we noticed that uh, some of the communications from the committee with agenda requests and things like that weren't going out to everybody in the committee. Uh, I had some agenda item requests that Heather wasn't aware of, so it made it a little bit difficult and confusing to uh, get the agenda put together. So we just wanted to maybe remind the committee and, and express the, the importance of making sure that everybody who's on the committee is included in all 
committee communication. So uh, all the committee members, uh, as well as myself as the council rep and chair and the administrative members, if we could make sure everybody's included on all those emails, everybody has the same information and uh, we're, we're all prepared in the same way and have access to all that stuff. So just helps things move smoother and make sure everybody has the same knowledge. Are there any questions or comments about that before we move on? I guess that's more of an information item than a discussion item, but so that's okay. Includes, I, I totally agree. It's good. Um, that includes Chad. He wants to be in on, is it Chad? It's Chad, yeah. I don't know who's on right now. So. Anyway, we could just make a distribution list. So it's just one, one click. So that would be great. I don't know how to do that. Well, no. everybody has to do it on their you own. You do it on end. your own. Yeah. So it, from everybody's yeah. email, and then so I can talk to Gary and give us some instructions. Oh, okay. yeah, Gary Gary has in Google, it's pretty easy. Gary, Gary has council set up. Yeah. It's just, you know, when you start typing council, mm -hmm. everybody shows up. Yeah. So if we could get set up for the Beaver Boardwalk Committee like that somehow. But, so that's what I'm saying. It's from like the town end of things. Gary can create that for us. And everybody with a town account will be able to just do exclamation mark. Oh, right, right, and, but right. for everybody nice. else, um, they'll have to create them on their own emails. Well, yep. well, could you, could it be, could it be made for just the folks with the town emails and then the oh, rest yeah. of us, maybe we can just add the other six. I think that'd be easy. Rather. So six plus one, seven emails to remember. Yes. I uh, will have IT do that up for me because I don't know how. So I did have a question then actually, and uh, because they're the official administrative representation for the terms of reference, uh, I believe there's technically only one administrative rep. And yet there's generally at the meetings, there's yourself, so um, there's Alexa. No, so Alexa was only here because um, Laura was the CAO and Alexa was Hans. And Hans was working in the capacity to bring information from Bebo. And now we're trying to get Chad brought up to speed. So we're, Hans and I actually chatted about that after our last meeting is that we're working slowly to kind of phase Hans out because it's just Chad and myself that are actually mentioned in the terms of reference. But it's transitioning all the knowledge out of Hans' brain to, to Chad and to previously Alexa. So that's why it's still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Chad should be included on those emails, email communications. Yes, absolutely. Heather should be included, uh, not Alexa anymore then, I guess. Correct. And Hans, for the time being. Chad is, I'm looking at the uh, the uh, terms of reference. Uh, Park, Arena Park Supervisor. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're all straight, all clear on that then. And who, who's part of the committee? Okay. I was a little confused on that myself, so yeah. that's good. Well, then when we start talking bridge projects, then we have to bring the whole other infrastructure and planning development team, that's Diana and Debbie and them, so for us. Yeah, their administrative support by yes. invitation. There you go, there you go. Okay, good. Anything else on uh, committee communications then before we move on? Okay, seeing nothing, we will move on to history of the boardwalk. Okay, that got you set up over here. Okay, sure. I'll drag this. I can actually bring you the mouse if you actually just share the screen. Oh, I'll go over there if you like, or I can oh, bring you the mouse. Okay. Show that to you. Okay. People on Zoom, can you see the presentation on the screen? Yep. I could just. Yep. Oh, you probably can't see it. Can't see it. So when you click, it should go to next. So what about everybody? Like, oh, why is it not sharing? Yeah, it's not on there. Yeah, on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, well. Okay. 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 This is fun. Okay. So we can't, why is that? I think I just need to drag it to the other side. Yeah, okay. Zoom, can you guys still see it? Nope. Now we see the, the mountain biker. Oh, no. Okay. Um, the Zoom must be on one window. Which window is it on? It's over here, which is where this should go, but then it disappears. 
pull that just one second. I'm going to just do this. You guys. Yeah, I'm very good for the beast. More angry about the phone. Oh, now. They should really need one if you're here. Yeah, I, I see it. I see it. Oh, there we go. Got it. Yeah, so you'll have to click on these ones because sometimes when we play it in Zoom, it doesn't share to Zoom. Oh, okay. yeah, so, so just I click through the slides yeah. rather than the full screen. Yes. Okay, so I'll start real quick. I dated this March 9th because there's, it turns out there's a lot of information here and um, you know, if I want to update it, I'll just put a new date on, like a final one. So basically, um, you know, this started our 50th anniversary of the town of Hinton. And how did this actually get going? This was an idea of Rick Bonner's. And uh, there we are. Um, I knew he was talking about that because we had been, you know, doing butterfly counts and whatever. And I remember standing at the bridge looking at the um, beaver, um, the beaver lodge and he saying, you know i'm talking about maybe having a um a boardwalk and at one point i was invited by the rotary club to speak at their wednesday new uh, uh, uh new lunch on wildlife that was it it's like well that's a pretty big topic so i thought well what do i talk about to businessmen so i talked about the town trails because they were already in place they were excellent but I thought it might be, and then I talked about bird watching, which was an increasing overall in um, popularity and, and um, everybody participation and that it might actually um, enhance people's um, enjoyment of the town trails if we got a bird list. And they said, we'd like that, go get a committee and come back. So I knew Rick had been talking about this. So I got Rick from West Fraser, the Rory Club, myself, and the town of Hinton, I think Scott Sunderwald was the, um, recreation manager at the time i'm not sure his real title we met at the old grind and rick came with a fully complete this thing here the beaver boardwalk proposal you know 10 pages budget the whole thing pictures precedents it's yes can you just uh, tell the folks who rick is for those oh rick bonner is, was the um uh biologist for west phaser he was in charge of wildlife and recreation and he had been there for a number of years and uh um lived in town you know local sort of uh knowledge keeper really from a wildlife and uh, uh outdoor recreation point of view so yeah thanks for that you know, yeah that's the other thing with this like we, we're so familiar that if i go through this and, we'll, and people want to add something just let me know because you just start assuming that people know things too right so um rick came with this and the four of us sat around and go let's do that <laughs> and so at that point um we we got going i actually formed the whiskey jack club to start collecting bird data for this bird list on the right here is actually what we he did this was the first year this was his plan go from the bridge to now what's an outdoor classroom build the outdoor classroom around and ar around the pond and come out at the town trail and that's what he did the first year and then the just demand grew from there um so and right from the beginning i'm going to call him oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, where am i I just kind of lose myself here a little bit. Oh, do you want me to just sit up there and you can tell me when you go to Yeah, the maybe that's yeah, easier sure. than me clicking the wrong. Okay, the next slide is just some of the thank you, Heather. Some of the specifications from his proposal. I just I'm not gonna read them all out, but he had thought this out. He had really got specs, he looked at what need how what needs to be done, how to put it together, all the specifics are here. So um, I just like there was, and he also carry carry on to the next one. Um, so original the original bill, two thousand seven winter construction. Um, they he and Rocky, I think I have details on this later. He and Rocky had discussed coupons and thought 
It was not necessary. There were three areas that were problematic once they finished here. And one, one is the from the bridge to the uh, outdoor classroom. The outdoor classroom itself was just really solid, like they hit refusal really early. Um, so what was involved here, West Fraser um, donated the lumber for the first year plus Rick's time. So he actually was supervisor, ordering equipment. He hired um, uh, carpenters for the tricky bits, like he did hire some professionals and organize all the volunteers. And it was small equipment, that's a West Fraser truck. And uh, I think the town led uh, Bobcat to pound the posts in. So all the heavier equipment would, would have been insured by either West Fraser or the town. And it was just the volunteers out there doing uh, stuff. So just light, 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 light equipment necessary. And lots of, you can see the uh, uh, volunteers here on the right. Okay, next. And the grant, we had a grand opening um, in 25, 2007. You can see uh, the Whiskey Jack Club. I had a bookmark made up. Uh, Town of Hinton, West Fraser, Rotary Club, and the communities of Bloom, not even that year. Uh, I think Hinton won a war for communities of Bloom, partly because of the boardwalk. And then the next two years, they got five wounds each because of the boardwalk. So that's that other little logo that's there. We did have another opening. I think we had an opening every year. Definitely the next slide, please. Uh, 2000, oh yeah, this was it. This was uh, three years, winter construction. The first year is the yellow. The second year is the orange, like the downstream loop and, and up Happy Creek. And, and then the third year, 2009, was all the blue all the way around. Um, and people were just clamoring for this. The town was behind it. This was a real thing. Um, yeah, so that's it. The next slide, uh, please. Yeah, so this, uh, oh yeah, this was a summary of Rick uh, from the Community of Blooms for, he had to keep summarizing these things. And for those that have never seen the, the uh, tower up uh, by the, this is the uh, Rocky Warren Tower, I think, yeah. This is what it looked like by the beaver pond. So I just put that in. I could probably find a better picture. That's a pretty good picture. Yeah. Pardon? That's a pretty good picture. It's, it's not, yeah, it's nice. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly, I put a lot of words in here. I'm not going to read everything, but we ended up with a three kilometer wood boardwalk, outdoor classroom, two observation towers, eight interpretive signs, two welcome signs, and a project sign. Um, the 2009, the volunteer support to date, three years. He put 3,000 hours at $50 an hour, more than 100 people donated time and support. Mr. Borbach, Rocky Moran donated five months of his time. Funding, 245,000 funding, so funding supplied by West Fraser Mills for FRIA, Forest Resource Improvement, Tech Coal, Alberta Lottery Fund, um, Town and Hinton, Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Yes, he was in contact with the Department of Fisheries and got money from them, and Hinton Rotary Club. Total project value, 318,000 to date. And um, oh yeah, contribute to the Community of Blooms Award in 2007 and the five blooms in the other years. Okay, next please. Okay, so his vision, this was his objectives we pulled out of uh, the phase three application. Uh, expanded town, a public recreation project located at the edge of town in a natural wetland forest complex and urban wildlife interface. A wildland interface, expand the public education interpretation right from the get-go related to forest ecosystems and forest management, both on-site and through related websites and other communication. Provide outstanding opportunity for Hinton and visitors to view beavers and other wild species in natural setting. This partly accomplished through a fall feeding program to provide public viewing opportunity to reduce beaver damage to trees and project area and link to related programs and projects of the sponsor and partner organizations to promote the concepts of conservation stewardship and integrated management of Alberta forest resources. Okay, next. And yeah. All right. So I'm kind of going through these are sort of the volunteer maintenance years because a number of years after that, Rocky and Rick kind of, especially Rocky, he would get out there in the spring and either jack up um, or winch posts straight and, and replace whatever they needed to replace, do whatever they needed. And Rick Bonner carried on with the, the beaver helping Rocky and, and with the beaver feeding program. Um, but it was sort of Rocky passed away 
uh, September 27, 2015, and Rick retired. So that was sort of the end of an era. And then I, this is a need help for the town for the sort of next part, because at one point, um, it's sort of a great, by the grapevine or, or uh, urban myth, but that volunteers were sort of discouraged from any maintenance activities. And maybe Hans, if you could fill me in on that point, but I like, that's out there that after that the volunteers were discouraged so nothing really but when these two guys you know were out of the picture then um there are you know some volunteers to carry on as best they could you know jacking up things embracing stuff and whatever so um that's something we can maybe talk about like it, you know are volunteers allowed to help with any level of this maintenance um so yeah, if, if I can. Sure. Yeah, I would need some clarification. I would like some clarification on that too, because that that does that's not exactly what I heard, but I'm no, not I, I wasn't directly related with it either. What I had heard was that when uh, Rick retired and Rocky passed away, that the maintenance wasn't being done at the level that it had been before, and it was becoming a safety risk. So the town kind of felt obligated to take it over, but I don't know. Like I said, that's just what I hear. So yeah, I don't know if there's a way to get some clarification on that, because I think it is important. Yeah, I had heard, I had heard it would like insurance was an issue there, um, but that's right, that's just a clear, and the, the point the is, pardon? This is before the town took it over. No, the town, it actually, I asked Rick, like when, when was it gifted to the town? But it was gifted right away. Like it, it was the town's. There was a completion ceremony in 2009. He's going to check all his journals and stuff. So um, really, Rick and Rocky were just doing this oh. uh, maintenance up to 2015. And it was the town's the whole time, really. But they were working. They were doing it. I mean, they were the original builders, and they were doing it. So really, it's been the town's the whole time. Um, um, but it's just, there was, you know, this sort of era where there was less done after these guys left or were out of the picture. So, and we know that- The Whiskey very, Jack, I know you can yeah. tell me to shut up at any point. No, yeah. The Whiskey Jack was back then a not-for-profit society? We, we, um, we never actually really incorporated ourselves because we never really needed to because the Rotary's our banker. And we never really needed to do that. Like if we wanted to take on bigger projects or whatever, then um, I was kind of wanting to create a society at that time, but a bunch of them said, oh no, we're, we're all busy with whatever do we, you know, so we never really have become a society formally, um, but the Rotary does our banking for us. So we kind of have a lot of things like that going, like we can raise money and give it to Rotary and spend money and get, a, you know, Rotary pays for us. So, yeah. So the town, there was no, the town was gifted it in 2009 ish, but there was never like any sort of agreement. Like they never met once a year or something to talk about. Like there was no communication between, well, was, was there a community like a yearly communication yeah, with Rick and to, Rick, the town was part of the four right from the beginning. Like Scott Sunderwell, the recreation would be like Hans's position. Was and it was Ken McLeod. So um, Rick was in constant uh, communication with Ken for every year, everything they were doing it. So it wasn't like the town was excluded or didn't know. Like Rick was always, you know, and that's like those years, the town was really uh, behind expanding it too. So it wasn't, it was, the town was always involved. Like it's never, the town was never left out of anything. In fact, they were one of the four. And the West Fraser paid for the, the wood and everything, and then Rick fundraised for the rest of it. So the, I think that was the gift part is the it, all of that, you know, and then and, and Rick just managed the whole thing, you know, which was a gift from uh, from West Fraser paying his salary because that's a big job organizing that kind of stuff. Yeah. So and then later on in his own time, like he would, you know, volunteer to help Rocky or whatever as well. So so it's sort of, yeah, it, it's always been the towns, but you just had Rock and Rocky and Rick just being actively maintaining it with their skill level and their knowledge of the whole thing. So, yeah, and, yeah. so up to let's say 20, 
15. The town, let's say, supported maybe once in a while the maintenance efforts by the volunteers still continuing on since 2009. So the town never had it in their portfolio as that's an asset that we have to maintain, plan it out or whatsoever, and then utilize the volunteers. It was basically the volunteers still driven. Yeah. So in 2015, when that maintenance became less and then of course not anymore, I think it was the summer of 2016 that the town crew went there for quite a bit during the summertime. Okay. So those hours that were spent in 2016 were an indication for us as a town at that moment, like how much effort had to be put in there for town staff. Right. That same amount didn't happen in 2017, just like 2016 was really a ramp up year in that sense. Yeah. But we did go to council at that moment. We started to craft a support funding for town staff because we saw at that moment happening, if we have to do this, it's an additional asset that we have to put time and effort in. So that moment we started to do that. I don't think it was the first year straight away, but after that we had three years of funding, additionally for staff members to do the maintenance on the boardwalk, which let's say concentrates in the summertime uh, when we hire additional staff. Those three years have not always been the spending of all of those dollars, depending on priorities, depending on uh, what was possible. And that dollar amount is not there anymore. So it's, now it's not in the budget anymore. So at that moment, we maintained it as parks staff based on, let's say, a safety priority. Like you said, checking it up, repairing, pulling things straight. Uh, and then last year, we did some more efforts in the sense when we started closing, basically two years ago already, right. maybe two years now. Uh, when we started closing sections, to make sure that we can uh, continue with the safety on the rest, for sure, and uh, open one section uh, when we pull that straight. Uh, okay. It's closed for, let's say, a couple of months. So now it's part of the planning, and that's why we are seeing this now. It's now back in the budget again for uh, 60K. So that's why we present it to the group. This is what we're going to do as parks maintenance crew. This is what we're going to focus on. That's how we're going to spend the 60k most likely with a lot of contractors. Uh, supporters. Yeah. Okay, and I have pictures of Chad's work here at the end. Like I put yeah. that back yeah. in the 60,000. So, but some of the middle, I was like, I put it all yeah. in, but I was like, hmm, yeah, what did happen? Yeah, so a transition years. moment, a transition yeah. moment from yeah. the asset back in 2009. Yeah. Then a transition moment was not an official transition. No, moment. Rocky passed away. But ramping up because there was no volunteer driven maintenance yeah. anymore. Yeah. And now to a, let's say, uh, transition that we have oversight of this committee on the maintenance uh, work as well. Yeah. So, so, that, so 2017, you began to plan for asset management, more of asset. This big asset. Well, as a management, not that's we're talking just about maintenance in maintenance. the background. Then, oh. of course, for asset management, we had a big study done by development services of the and we call that feasibility right. report of the beef water wall. Right. Now you talked about long-term planning, asset management, rehabilitation slash replacement. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, if I kind of show those yeah. here too. Did you have a question, Jan? Well, I, I guess, so you're saying that the, the volunteer effort, and I think you're saying as well, the volunteer effort kind of died when, well, that's about it. But when no, Rocky, it's true. When yeah. Rocky, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and for you that guys that didn't know Rocky, he was a kind of a legend in Hinton, uh, amazing guy who did a lot for the town. Yeah. So that's to say, I guess I guess what I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking that Albert over there is kind of thinking about in the back of his head about volunteers and how to deal with volunteers as we move forward and stuff. So. Yeah, but I jump in for a sec if that's okay. Oh, yeah. uh, Beth and Jan both asked a question about adding. Um, a discussion about volunteers and liability and and the uh, risks and and uh, challenges and just some information about that to to an upcoming agenda and i've talked to you both individually so you guys know but the group as a whole doesn't they would have seen that request but they didn't uh, didn't hear the answer and we talked about that when we were planning today's agenda uh, there's just too much on this agenda 
and there's a bunch of background information that uh, that administration is going to have to get to bring that together. So that is coming forward at the April meeting. At the April meeting, we're going to be able to have an informed discussion about uh, uh, volunteers and and what the anyway. All that information should form part of that package, so we can have an informed discussion about it in April. So that yeah. that'll be something we can look forward to for the for the next month's meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Because okay, let's let's move on. Uh, okay, Ooh. maintenance methods. Okay, this was an excerpt I emailed Rick and asked him how he and Rocky were doing maintenance, and he was just I don't know if I need to read this whole thing. Uh, oh yeah, when we installed the outdoor classroom, we hit refusal at shallow depth. They sit on hard ground, so that's why they're stable. Most of the rest of the posts were similar. Went down to hard ground, shouldn't shift that much. Considerable portions of the section of our the forest are on piles, they're on ledges, so those are easy fixes. They deliberately put the boardwalk with, together with screws to make disassembly repairs easier. By the way, the ACQ screws don't last forever and need regular maintenance too. I do agree there's a few sections where these methods don't work and something else needs to be done. The most prominent is one for the bridge of the classroom. We used 10 foot posts in that section. They didn't hit bottom when installed. Uh, the same applies at the east end of the lake. There's number two on the short spur to the lower part of the tower and also three in the last section of the main board rock at that end of the lake. Rocky and I discussed group files, but we didn't think they would work in these last two sections. The soils are just too loose. I think those sections two and three should be floating, but three is the one that we we kind of recommended. It's sunk away and we don't really need it anymore. And that too is an interesting idea. Like, can you, would that be more appropriate a floating thing? Um, we did, and we did annual maintenance ourselves, Rocky, a little need for funding except for screws and hardware. He had extra lumber left anyway from in his yard that if they needed other boards, they would just use. Uh, they simply unscrewed sections, need leveling, did whatever he thought would work for each situation. Sometimes they extended the post or raised straight the post using a jack winch and then put cross pieces to brace against other posts and minimize resettling. Okay, that's just sort of what they were doing during those maintenance years. And uh, next, um, and we, here we are. Oh yeah, so then we kind of moved to the town and these are all these big uh, assessment reports and I don't want to get into the detail because there's a lot here. There's a lot of budget stuff, there's a lot. And uh, basically there's sort of three things and they all kind of landed on the public at once. And the Beaver Boardwalk Assessment was this big ISL report, concept design and feasibility um, report. Um, and da, 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 da. yeah, and I, I put triggers public outcry because this, I will go to the next slide. This is kind of what it was talking about to make the Beaver Boardwalk. Did I miss? There's a slide I've missed here. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this was, they were, these were all the concepts that came up. This was over designed for, this may be for our little wetland. It's not that big. It's, it's a town wetland. They had parallel polygon, like design concepts, four different design contexts, four different wood option deck, wood deck, concrete, steel deck, you name it. And there's big dollars with all of this. And so the public's going, whoa. And then basically the feedback uh, from there was the boardwalk assessment there and there was uh, at the same time the bridge was happening and replacement and the um, Maxwell Lake recreation area outline plan all kind of in those couple of years like 2018 2019 the public was inundated with this and the feedback was we want it the way it was we like our boardwalk we don't want all these glammy things we want it to be the way it was. So we'll carry on here. Um, okay, so here's the original bridge was put in with the uh, original trail system in the 1990s. And actually Rick had been had offered to replace that during boardwalk construction and they had turned them down. So it's too bad it might have solved a whole lot of problems. So this is kind of an and sure enough here's you know some years you have water flooding that uh, path to it. And so the bridge was um, in disrepair and needing, so in 2018 it was removed. Okay, and so again, again, these years are really intense for the public to be having to see all these changes. Okay, next. 
Um, okay, and for those that haven't seen the ramps, here's what it looked like. Um, and yeah, it was just gravel ramps, no sediment curtains, no erosion control. Um, AEP came and started looked at it and then said, no, this violates the wetland policy and you need to take this thing out. So the gravel was removed. I think there's another picture of the gravel in the next one. Uh, the other way, this, they dragged it right across the outlet. That's right on the outlet, the gravel. <laughs> so it was really a poor job. I, I guess it was in the ISL plans, but the contractor too would be responsible. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're, say you're, an engineer and you're given architectural drawings and you realize some there's a gap some the architect missed something you don't just go oh well i just i just built this building with this missing piece you you go back to the architect and say what about this so i don't know there was a lot of stuff going on that was not happy at the time and i just put this picture of the old bridge and this is kind of Revan, this is how it was being used and that's a really old picture but you know the little kids and their little pond studies and and um, you could look through the bridge or over it or whatever so this new cons bridge just completely re removes all of that it's a whole nother level so the bridge was uh, a fiasco installation okay so next which so that sort of public outcry this was all all put together and then also there was this it was maxwell lake recreation outline plan and there was an engagement uh, summary and, and the outline plan was really again way over the top for um uh it had every kind of like enhancement and paved trails and all kinds of stuff in here and I, i'm not going to go into all the detail but the comment there was an engagement summary and i think of the 87 written comments 39 just said like nothing not much like just not even saying I like this piece a little bit or that piece it was just like flat out no which is a pretty big public pushback against over developing our wetland which really Rick's vision had been from the beginning sort of um, awareness education stewardship appreciation of the natural world okay um, next please um, oh yeah, and then um, then we get into the that you've explained this Hans with Chad's uh, work uh, where we finally got back to Alina's budget, um, and these were done in the fall. I think I don't have the date right, twenty twenty. But just there's just examples of what he went and got. Like the one section on the left was had been closed, and then he he got in there, fixed up, and got it got it open. And the other section on the right just uh, flooded continually. So he did a nice little um, address that problem with, uh, with a new boardwalk there. So uh, with, with the 60,000 budget. And then just the last slide, um, why are wetlands important? I just gotta throw this in all the time. What protect wildlife by providing a safe place to sleep and eat, wetlands filter water, clean up pollution or known as the kidneys of the planet. Wetlands protect from droughts and flood. Um, as it's estimated that Alberta's lost between 60 and 70 percent of wetlands in the settled areas. So we've got a nice little treasure here. Um, Hidden Valley's Maxwell Lake for community bonding, learning, and connecting with nature. So that's just a real quick history. And then later years, there was a lot of intense detail there, which I didn't get into because it takes a long time to even put this much together <laughs> in terms of the history. So if there's anything else, we can certainly add or dig into it a little more as well. So is there anything that you may have missed or like I should be bringing out anymore? Okay. Thanks, Beth. Maybe any comments, questions for Beth? Did, uh, did Rick ever supply a, a, a really, do you have all his ideas that he had at the beginning? Mm -hmm. I have all his proposals. I got a proposal for it. Like the thing, Rick was very organized person, very productive. So he had a proposal for every single year, 2007, another, this is 2008, 2009, the summaries and all of that. Did yeah. he ever propose different ways of doing it that might, like you still, you still talk to him, you know, he knows yeah. what's going on. Does he have other ideas of how things can be done and like, 
For example, I've, I've always, people have always mentioned the use of floating docks for some sections. Has he ever talked about that? Or what is his thoughts on he, that kind of stuff? He did mention, like they did when they first put it together, they did consider screw piles, but they thought they were really expensive and not necessary. Given, that's why they screwed everything together. And uh, the three areas he, he did mention recently were, um, like three problematic areas was from the bridge to the um, the outdoor classroom, and he thought he knew they would have to that would come back to haunt them. They would have to deal with that in the future. He knew that wouldn't stay because because they did a tip refusal, and so maybe screw piles there. Like some places, screw piles are going to be really useful because that that place you could probably put the wooden back in there, but it would probably repeat again. So those areas where you all had sort of repeating uh, a significant maintenance year after year, then yeah, those, that was the one. The other was um, the section that's closed now on the southeast corner of the lake. And he, he the last communication I had, he said, you know, maybe they thought screw piles would, they talked about screw piles from there, but they think they, and maybe there's more information from that Hogan report in terms of how deep all this stuff goes, but they thought it was just too loose. So they thought that section floating would be good. And there is a lot of really recent, uh, I know when we talked to Scott Classens, the, the AAP um, fellow that gave the um, water application approval. And um, I talked to him with you and Alice, I guess, we, we had statement concerns. And he, he solved all our statements of concerns. It was a really interesting discussion. But he did mention even a company in Grand Prairie that is has been um, creating these floating structures for oil patch people and stuff. Like he actually got class and mentioned that. And Rick actually did say that that may be a consideration for that piece that's closed now. Is maybe we look at floating structures. And he did also mention the that uh, crescent that goes around to the lower, um, the lower part of the tower, the Rick Bonner Tower at the East End, that um, that, that probably should be floating as well if, if it was to ever be done again. But so those three areas, and then earlier on he had mentioned uh, the tower. He did have people helping him with the tower, but that was one thing he thought that maybe. He, he could have benefited from having an engineer looking at the, the tower footings and everything. Uh, so those are sort of the, the four areas where he was really saying this, these are you know areas that may you need to might look at different ways of doing the board Is that your question? Yeah, I'm just curious. I think yeah. it uh, yeah. no, might be handy in the future to, to know his knowledge. He's obviously put a lot of time and effort into it. Yeah, there's researching it and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, but that's in. Uh, I think those are in that. I kind of went over fast, but it's in. It's in those uh, three areas are in uh, on the PowerPoint here. I've, I've identified them there. So, yeah, and then I'm still. Yeah, he lives in Vernon. We still talk. He does Christmas bird counts in Hawaii. There's all kinds of you know that kind of stuff. So. So for those that don't have um, the presentation, well, nobody does except for Beth. Um, so I will circulate that around. If you don't mind, I keep the stick for now, and I'll bring it to you at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll send that by email for everybody because it took quite a bit of work for Beth to put it together. So she's only able to get it to me today. But no worries, we'll uh, get that shared around. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Great. Well, thanks, Beth. It was informative. <laughs> the world, man. There's a lot, a lot of information. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of history. It's interesting history when there's a, a group that's doing infrastructure on on town owned land. It's yeah. not the first time. But not all of it's town owned land. What's that? Yeah. Not all of it's town owned land. So we can discuss that later. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it is true crown land. Oh, yeah, crown. Sorry, I thought you meant part of it. Yeah. yeah, some is town and some is not. Yeah, actually, I think most of it's crown. That's not a, it's a crown it's lease, lease, isn't it? Yeah. Is it a recreational lease? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, well, if there's nothing further on that, we will move on to uh, review of BBO Council recommendations, piles, and general mandate. Zoe, are you yep. presenting that? Okay. Sure. I will share my screen, but this was shared in your agenda package. It's the deliverables report. Um, so, um, so this is the report that went in front of council from the Beaver Boardwalk Committee, the original committee of council and admin to try and uh, figure out what the future of the boardwalk would be. So we just wanted to um, circle back with everyone, make sure you all have a copy of this, because the chart here are the recommendations that came from council and were ultimately um, passed by a motion. And these 13, I think it is, 14 recommendations are the foundation of this committee. This is essentially the box that we have to play within. So when it says, um, you know, a certain type of wood, that's the wood that's being used. If it says screw piles, those decisions have essentially been made already. Now, if we want to add new sections, uh, like Jan was saying, we want to do some flotation stuff. Those are recommendations we can make to council for them to consider for us to move forward with those. So I just wanted to kind of, we did review this in our very, very first meeting and perhaps even the handover meeting that we had between the two committees. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of remind everyone that they, this report is actually referenced in our term of, terms of reference, um, that we have to kind of adhere to these 14 recommendations. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of draw everyone's attention back to that. Does anybody have questions? Councilor Stash, is there anything you want me to elaborate further on? Um, go through I, I don't think so. No, we'll, we'll look to the committee if there's questions or comments or anything. Um, yeah. One, one thing that I think was hard for the public and maybe is actually having the bridge separate from the boardwalk like that, like when I went through the history, I said, well, this has been difficult right from the beginning, keeping it separate. And so I'm assuming that the bridge should like to me, the whole thing is one should be one kind of unit. Like how, how does that fit in? Yeah. So when we read, uh, when we brought the terms of reference back to council, they included that, right? So we have as part of our terms of reference, a map that shows the whole boardwalk is being part of this committee's, um, duties. Now. Right. However, at the time that we had the Beaver boardwalk committee, we had so many unknowns around even the water act application process and whether we were doing a maintenance request or a different water act approval and then diana with respect to the bridge had separate approvals going on over here so that's why the beaver boardwalk committee at the time decided to keep them separate so that we could really truly focus on the sections of the boardwalk that were failing um, but now the bridge is part of what we can discuss here and there aren't any recommendations from council really to do with the bridge other than what comes out of their council meeting. So there's nothing in our terms of reference that talks about that other than it's now part of the area that we oversee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have already provided recommendations. Correct. Yeah. I would like to ask a question. Yep. Go ahead, Neil. I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> Classic. Um, Oh yeah, uh, the recommendation number twelve um, for options removal of du duplicated boardwalk and trails. That, well, we just put forward a mm -hmm. a thing last meeting or, that we don't believe in duplicated sections. So, are we counter? meaning our own little thing here no because that one actually had a separate motion of council so that's kind of why that showed up in here was because they were still waiting for a report from Han. so by the time we got to bringing that report before council this committee was established so we were like well this isn't really our call to make without consulting um the bboc and you guys you know made that recommendation to council and ultimately that report was accepted once for information for information yeah, yeah. so, so it did not have any further okay. recommendations but they took that for yeah, sure. Listen to that. Uh, what came out of the board book? Have a question. Um, another one on the screw piles, the local piles. It seems to me like, is there a formal strategy 
the town is going to replace everything with school piles or like because to me it's so costly it would take us forever and we're just not, not going to get there like um so is there a, a formal strategy or approach that we need to be addressing from our our group well i think that every approach is it will come as a project so when we had the 300 grant coming as a grant funding so that was a possibility to do something at the boardwalk that moment it became a project became for council and the decision was made to do those sections with the school plans so when there's new funding coming it will be a new project however that project is going to be formalized with this group as an input has to be considered at that moment so no there is not it has to be school plans from here on so once we have money it will be next five meters of screw pile and then next it will come as a project from this committee and i think council in the meantime also has their uh, let's say considerations about uh is this going to be piecemealed together as screw pile project or looking into alternatives or is that something things. where we would make a motion of alternative footing being something that could be considered or is that i think when the Let's say when the opportunity comes up to talk about a project or a certain area or a project or this funding, at that moment it's going to be important to have that on the table. And then the motion from this group or the recommendation from this group will be important. So, for example, um, if we decide we want to put the, the dock back in, right? Um, you can build a dock that has piles, you can also build a dock that floats, right? So if we're evaluating that project and we go, why would we pay for piles for this? Especially if, you know, we it makes it easier for Chad's group, let's say, to be able to move it on its floats to do repairs, right? Those kinds of considerations would then make up the business case to take back to council to make the recommendation to say, look, you guys said piles, but for this section, it just doesn't make sense. Or when we're evaluating, perhaps putting up the towers, you know, we're looking at um, suspending it, let's say, or something like that, where it's just, um, you know, better spending, um, better longevity in terms of life cycle, those kinds of things are why the original Beaver Boardwalk Committee went with the piles was because in the grand scheme of things, those will give us the longest life. But are they going to be perfect for every scenario? No, but we need to consider those first. Hypothetically, um, I'm sorry. What were you? I'm going to go to Doug and then I can come back. Go ahead, Doug. No, oh, I was going to say that um, about a month ago or so, Trevor did good work where he kind of compiled a lot of the uh, the project costs so far, and it was looking like the project cost was about 1300 bucks a meter uh, for screw pile installations. And uh, I recall at a council meeting there, the one that uh, Hans kind of forwarded to us, um, what was it? I think it was February's council meeting. Uh, anyway. Uh, in that the one there was good discussion the one where they decided not to go with the uh, the ramp design as is but uh, i think there was good discussion about splitting up um your contractor costs or sorry con uh, how, how should i say that uh, rather than going with a general contractor basically splitting up the work scope so i, I think what is causing a, a lot of discussion is because we look at that cost of 1300 bucks a meter which is very very pricey and i i really suspect that when you split up your work scope which is appears what council wants to do I think you're going to find that your cost per meter is going to drop dramatically. And when that does, then it really opens up a lot more options on that front. I, I mean, 1300 bucks a meter is a lot for screw piles. I, my next door neighbor in Edmonton used to do screw piles and he, did, he, he basically charged 250 bucks for two and seven eighths pile. It's, uh, I, I think you'll see a lot of um, options kind of open up and it'll make the screw pile seem a lot more palatable uh, when, you, when you start going down that avenue. Uh, thanks, Doug. I'll hold it back to Colin. Okay, thanks. Um, hypothetically, I guess your method of construction will decide some of that, but there's consequence to some of the seasonal payments you may, may with the floating. Do you have to take it out before the ice comes in so it doesn't cause damage to the floating portion of the dock? Or I guess those are considerations when you can explore those options more completely. Yeah, so one of the one of the main drivers of that discussion that the original Beaver Boardwalk Committee had uh, regarding the screw piles is the fact that you don't have to go back and impact the wetland again effectively forever, realistically, because they have a 
estimated life of 75 years. Is that correct? 75 or so. Yeah. yeah, the piles themselves, not the decking. So you would, there is going to have to be decking repairs, but even the decking repairs should be minimized because the screw cut screw piles be, being sunk and anchored into the substrate stops the uh, freeze thaw cycle from lifting and twisting the decking so much. So the decking requires much less repairs. So even in that last report that council got, I think the uh, estimated decking life was 25 years compared to mm -hmm. 10 or 15 that we've gotten out of the current decking sitting on the wooden piles. So that was one of the considerations that that original committee made in recommending the screw piles is the fact that the wetland only really has to be disturbed by heavy equipment going on to it to drill in pilings basically realistically once. And then after that, it can be handwork replacing decking. Even if it's full sections of decking, it can still be handwork with minimal impact to the to the wetland. So that's that was the basis for that recommendation, why that came forward as a recommendation. John? But to answer Beth's question, what I'm hearing is the next time we go, the next time something is being worked on, we have the opportunity to put forward a recommendation countering that recommendation. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's good, right? Yeah. Just yeah. to add to the screw bottle discussion. In a formal, former life, I had a uh, material choice. I mean, you get untreated, you can get uh, hot galvanized, you can get stainless steel. There's, there's choices within choice there. And then we've already, there's some informed um, procedure here because of the, the geotechnical study that was done. We have an understanding of somewhere between generally five to eight meters, although that's not like for everywhere. That's, that's a generalization, but we have a reasonable the word I'm looking for. A reasonable chance of being sure that you're putting it in substrate that's not going to give you problem. This is the so, so the other point I was just going to make was I referring to you on um, what you just said that uh, it totally makes sense to me. But my problem is when I watch council meetings, I can feel them like just in their heads saying we can't afford to upkeep all of this boardwalk. That's the general feeling I get from the council. So it becomes a, you know, do we keep all of the boardwalk and try to minimize the use of screw piles or do we go haul hog on everything screw pile and not have the current length of boardwalk? And that's a decision we're going to have to make. Yeah. So I just, like your point is really fair, but that's I'm just putting, laying out my struggle here because I would like to see the current amount of boardwalk. I would like us to try to find a way of making that happen. Yeah, I can I can kind of see a combination of screw piles and 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 uh, wooden wooden pilings as well. I mean, it is a renewable resource, and that's a lot of steel just to be sitting in a wetland. But and the but that's where the volunteers would come in. To like to keep costs down. Like, obviously, screw piles you need specialized equipment and, and people and everything. But um, yeah, I guess you have volunteers to, is a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's that's on a future agenda. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but that that would be yeah. part of it as well. Like when you get to the project, you know, basically what we did on, on the February twenty three is that the guys putting screw piles in a couple of sections, which are pretty darn easy. It would have been easy for volunteers to get in. Now we're gonna screw pile them just because we had to use the screw piles. Oh, that does remind me, it's a little off topic. You can put me back on topic. Um, I did think after why wouldn't, why we never did discuss replacing the boardwalk beside the rough road with this contractor. Like why not? We didn't, I never even thought about it until after the meeting. I think he emailed everybody after. It's like, why Why wouldn't we just I think do we that? We decided at the very beginning that that wasn't part of our oversight, which I'm not sure I totally agree with, but I think we decided that. That is correct. It's outside our. But it's outside aren't, our aren't, didn't, aren't you using some of the $60,000 to fix that, though? That's right. Well, yes. then that's what I was like to me, it's still part. And so if you can use part of our $60,000. 
for that, then it's still consistent that, you know, we, that it's sort of part of our groups. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, unfortunately, a couple things that is quite off topic from what we're discussing yeah. today. We have a lot to get through today. Uh, again, unfortunately, that wasn't brought up at the meeting. Those recommendations went to council, and council's already given direction on what to do with uh, with that um, uh, with, with, with the uh, sections of boardwalk that weren't able to be uh, reconstructed per per the plan. I'm assuming that's already been communicated to the contractor because there's a pretty close, pretty short window. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, next next time around, if we get the opportunity again, that could be something we could consider. But this time around, unfortunately, that opportunity's passed. I'm thinking something. It kind of brings up an issue though, is like how do you like how clumsy is our committee? Like, because I brought I sent that around to everybody before council meeting. And there wasn't a, a response at all from anybody. So how do we do that? Like you go back to a committee and two days later, it's like, oh my God, I got this bright idea that would solve all our problems. How, how do we as a committee then handle that? So I think unfortunately that with the quick turnaround and the reason we had to have the emergency meeting was because that needed to hit the first meeting in March. And mm -hmm. with our report, like that had to be in the agenda on Friday, which means that it was reviewed so we had a meeting on Wednesday. It, it was reviewed by this group. It was then reviewed at a senior leadership team on Thursday morning. Hans has to then take those notes and go back and compile that. We are not allowed to change our reports after that meeting. Now, if we had gone to the CAO and said, this is an absolute emergency, we still as a committee would have had to come together again and make motions that would have had to carry in order for Hans to then go and change his report. So I just think in this instance, we just ran out of time because of the, the short timeline that Hans is up against with respect to getting the work done out there. But that, so in a, in a separate case, if you had sent that, that email, right, and we thought, oh, we've got three weeks before this can get back on the agenda, then we could have met again, had a consensus, and then Hans would have time to bring that back to the appropriate people within the organization to get the report approved to go to council that way. Is that what you were asking? That was what I was asking, yeah. Like how- I thought you were asking something. No, no, it's like, you know, because how do we act quickly? Like we're not nimble, basically, is the answer. We're not nimble. <laughs> I, I thought you were asking. Yeah. Because you, you did send out an email. Yeah, and nobody responded. But so I think next time when you send it out, yeah. you should send Please add this to agenda as soon as possible. But it wouldn't have even mattered. No, no, that wasn't the point. The point was it was it had relevance to what we'd already already decided. I thought, man, why didn't I think of that at the meeting? But it was two days later. And so, can you change something quickly? Okay. Basically, no, you can't. Yeah. yeah. So no, sorry. Yeah. Doug. Well, my my input on that was just that uh, I thought Hans's uh, kind of plan B was was good enough, and certainly that Rob road boardwalk might might be better. But I mean, it takes a lot of time and energy to change the course of a of a project. Lots of organizations. So, I, I mean, I, I thought the what we had talked about at that previous meeting had, I mean, it was it was pretty good. I thought so. I, that's why I didn't really um, kind of answer back on that email there, Beth. I honestly thought that what we had already talked about was was certainly good enough, and it. Any other, anything else to reverse all that energy is sometimes not not um, not enough. What's the word I'm looking for? Not enough. Uh, well, anyway, not enough benefit for it. Thank you, Doug. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't want to I don't want to dwell on it, and we all understand there was a short timeline, but. Um, I just went back and looked and your email went out on Monday the 28th, correct? Oh, went on Monday. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty tight. Yeah. Well, it's the really tight because yeah. the agenda goes out. Well, it's not really tight. It's not possible. It's not possible. The agenda goes right. out on the previous Friday. Right. And even that, though, then reports have to be in when? Thursday. Thursday. So we, Thursday. Well, it, it didn't hurt to send the idea out. You know, first, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. The report is already. You guys have already done that. Yeah. Worst case is it's a learning experience, I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
And, and it's, it's an idea knowledge. that, like, I think sometimes it's a reminder that I thought it was a good discussion too, John. Uh, like, the, I thought the emergency meeting went really well, but um, it's sort of a reminder sometimes you got to think a little bit out of the box a little more, <laughs> too. And things will improve as we move forward, too. There's going to be less and less overlap between actions and decisions that are already in progress and this committee talking about them and reviewing them. This committee is going to get stuff way earlier in the process moving forward. So there will be more time for sober second thought. Well, maybe not that one. That was kind of an emergency mm -hmm. thing, but still, uh, ideally, most situations will have more time to think about things and not have to right now make a decision and recommendation. So hopefully that gets better. John? So just still, let me get this clear here. There's $60,000 available for maintenance this spring, right? Yeah, it's this budget year. Sorry, right? yeah. yeah. And it's for boardwalk. Yes. And we're the boardwalk, we were the boardwalk oversight committee. And part of that $60,000 was spent on that section, but yet we're not discussing that section. So right, it I still gets to what she's saying, and I know that you, I, that's where you said it's not part of the agenda, so maybe we should add that to the next agenda, because I, I do think that we need some clarification on that. Like, money's being spent on the board, we have a boardwalk, we're the oversight for the, money's being spent on boardwalk, we're the boardwalk oversight committee, and yet we're not dealing with that section. That's exactly right. how you say it. We have more than one walk in town than Pause. in this area. Did you... While I was away, you guys presented the maintenance plan, correct? Yes. So that was covered during that plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this committee did approve it? Yes, but they, at that moment, they also said like, hey, this is interesting. It's a section outside mm -hmm. our area, mm -hmm. but it's a boardwalk section, so. Right. And then this, yeah. But that's ultimately the group did approve your maintenance for Chad's maintenance plan? Yeah. It's still awkward. I don't know if we really. I thought it was already, I it was already set in motion, and we well, just had to say do. Yeah, what yeah. it was one of those yeah. kind of we got it for consensus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't remember us making a, a pass no. or a motion. Well, motion well, that, and it, we, we were just told this is what's happening. So, like, it's, without me being there, I don't think there needs to be that is part of our terms of reference, right? Where Chad brings every year a maintenance plan so that you guys can say, hey, this area here. We shouldn't be doing this. Let's let's do this area instead. And then Chad goes back to the drawing board because of our timeline. I can absolutely see what you guys are saying about how it felt more like a okay, just because of when the committee got established. But going forward, Jan, oh, I, that is every free. year you guys will see but that I, and we, approve it. And when we hopefully we add this to the agenda for the next meeting, then because I think we should have a discussion on it and revisit that. And I would probably put the motion forward that it's part of our domain. I don't know. That's just my thoughts right now. But then we have to change. Yeah, the no, the, it's no. not though because the terms of reference what? define what's our. Okay, so well, figure it out for yeah. me. So that we don't use money is going towards yeah. the boardwalk. We're supposed to have a oversight on it, and yet we don't have any say on it. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I can, I and I discussion. totally think it needs to be repaired. I mean, the thing is, it's probably the worst section of boardwalk in the whole town, right? Yeah, it's awful. Um, the discussion I remember, this is my memory, so be advised, uh, was that we needed to repair a boardwalk, but I don't know that the funds were actually earmarked as beaver boardwalk. I'm not really aware of the nuts and bolts of that, but that's that's my recollection of it, was we had a boardwalk that needed. Do we have an inventory of how many boardwalks we have outside the beaver boardwalk? I mean, talking like the area or that's yeah we have to story but that's the only section that is currently be for boardwalk section outside so that's that's a good question it's really yeah good question. No, but absolutely you you hit it though that's the the, the Sixty thousand dollars in the approved budget is for boardwalk repairs. It's not beaver boardwalk repairs it's boardwalk repairs this committee's uh realm of of accountability and, and responsibility is within the footprint of the beaver boardwalk for the terms of reference so there is some there's some discussion and some overlap 
but just, just, just I'm, not, I'm not sure how to bring some resolution to that, but um, you know, when, when administration comes with their maintenance recommendations, it's going to say that they're planning to spend $10,000 on, on uh, uh, boardwalk maintenance that's outside the footprint of the Beaver Boardwalk. It doesn't mean this committee can't speak to it and say, well, no, I think there's a higher it's priority just, within, the, within so, the Beaver Boardwalk. You know, all these boardwalks so, over wetland areas. Is there a beaver living right there? No. <laughs> like, I guess you need to, well, we should have the, 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 the terms of reference. And I, I really hate terms, all the nitpicky stuff, but I guess in our heads, we have to all agree on what the Beaver Boardwalk is and what area it covers. And then next time, don't come to us saying, do you approve us using this money for a section that we don't even have a say in? Ms. White? Yeah, so yes. you do have oversight of the funds, right, as per the recommendations report. Right, so if Hans and his crew come, or Chad and his crew come and say, we need to spend some of this money on this this area that's outside of the current terms of reference, right? Then, and you guys go, well, no, I really think that we need the money over here, right? Then Hans ha or Chad has to take a report back to council to say, look, this is now what we're going to spend our money on for the boardwalk. Additional to that is that when the Beaver Boardwalk Committee originally made their terms of reference, it is due to be reviewed. And it's because of this, because we knew we would come up against things once we have everybody in the room, right, that, oh, this actually doesn't really work. We need to expand. And council's expecting that. They're expecting us to bring that back. But I would caution this group to not have us spin our wheels on that one section on a terms of reference when we have projects that need to be completed out in that wetland that will take approvals that will take um, grant funding, all of these other things that we could be spending our time and energy on. But I can absolutely flag that item as something that we want to discuss when it comes up to be renewed by council. It needs to be. Yeah. It has to be because yeah. what you just said. But are still we going to prioritize that no. above everything else? No. That's the question I'm asking. No, no. But what you just said doesn't make sense to me. So we, yes, we do have to deal with it at some point. Not to belabor being off topic, but I'm going to bring something else up. So how far, how far does this group want their their scope to extend then? Because there's a section okay. of there's a section of boardwalk behind um, um, Muldoon. Yeah. So is that going to be in this group's scope too? I don't know, but I don't want someone coming to me saying, "Do you approve the use of this money for this section?" I'll be like, "It has nothing to do with us. So why am I saying it?" Yeah, like it's it's there it's a just it's not a it's a mismatch. And like it's a total mismatch. Like is a sixty thousand dollars for the Beaver Boardwalk or not? It's for boardwalk. So who gets to decide how to allocate? Like what portion does the Beaver Boardwalk get every year? Or like who makes those decisions? Because you know if it's outside our our scope then we can't there's so there's this piece of money that we really sort of we get some years and sort of we don't like what, what would happen if we had voted not to put any yeah. money towards it then, I, then think, so I need to remind committee one again this committee exists to make recommendations this committee doesn't actually okay, make so decisions it's the wrong about, word but what if we recommend no not not, it's not, yes it is the wrong word but it's very important okay so I'm it's a recommendation it. that goes to council and then council makes and actually to be honest with you council doesn't even make decisions about where uh that money is spent council makes the decision to say there is sixty thousand dollars available for boardwalk repair. That's it. Council doesn't say where. Yeah, that's a thing actually that I think is important to know. Council is much higher level than than most people understand and 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 think it is. Council doesn't manage the day-to-day -day activities of maintenance. Council doesn't dictate where it happens. Doesn't have, they don't dictate when. All they they provide a budget, and that's it. So outside of that, administration. No, there there is very valuable work that this group. Is well, doing. back to my point though. If we had recommended not to put money towards it, and 
it followed a course of, well, okay, we're not going to put money towards it, then the thing is not going to be repaired. And then someone out there says, well, the Beaver Boardwalk Committee didn't recommend it. And it's like, well, we don't have a say in it. So we have to visit that. That goes back to what Ms. Wade had said. That, like this group could have recommended not to spend money there, but they felt that there is a higher priority. Again, I, higher if I, remember correctly, session I didn't feel else. they had a say in that. I thought that that decision was already done. That $60,000 was done outside our purview. No, the plan was made by maintenance, and that's why we presented it and asked for consensus. And that's what we did. And at that moment, the consensus was part of okay. the wow. committee of that. Still, that's fine. I, I got it missed me. And that's fine, but I, I, we have to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that comes before this committee is open for discussion, open for motion, open for recommendation. Ultimately, we could recommend that we need more funding directly for the people who are Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Can. And I think that's, that's the thing that has access to. So I'm not going to take credit for it. I just have it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Doug. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, just a question, uh, maybe for Heather or Hans, but uh, if we do see an area of the boardwalk that needs maintenance, say a fallen tree or an area that needs to be shimmed up, what's the mechanism to uh, kind of flag that for you guys? Go first. Uh, maybe I'll go first. Yeah, sure. yeah. So uh, we have the system, of course, that the, the public uh, notifies us. There's a, the app, most people call straight away public works. So that's how the work orders are generated for things that are happening at the spot. So we get calls, we get photos, we get information from the public. And then okay, so I just call I just call the town with a picture or something like that. That's how it works. Yeah, yes. there's a couple of mechanisms. So you can either call and describe the area. We did do away with the app on at Christmas okay. because mm -hmm. it was uh, not performing, but you can still perform the same function through the website, which is why you probably think it still exists. Um, so through the website or by sending a photo or an email to info at Hinton. Um, and then that comes into my area actually. And then we distribute that to the appropriate crew to fix the work. If you guys are out in the community or out there and you see something, you can also send it to info at Hinton or you can reach out to me directly and I'll get it to um, the appropriate crew for fixing. Um, but if it's something that you're like, holy smokes, this is a big one and you want to chat about it here, then we get, then we put it on the agenda and perhaps that drives one of our project areas. Oh, no, it was just minor, minor maintenance ones that I picked up and had some pictures. So I figured I'd send them in. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Is there anything else on the uh, review of people council recommendations? Okay, There's nothing for that. We'll move on to 2022 proposed grant funded projects, which is a carryover from the last month's meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on 4.4 of the agenda, you see a list of towers, picnic tables, additional open classroom, right, uh, an entrance at Rhymer Drive, the dock, current closed sections like the West Loop, which on your map is J and K, um, section A, and the West Connection to the bridge, section O. These were all sections that had previously been identified either by Chad's crew as areas that need some work or by... Um, the actually the, the unaccepted report that went to council the Maxwell Lake uh, rec area plan. So these are just some of the ideas that were in there that we thought this is an example of the types of things that we can consider at this table to start to seek grants for and repair. So for example, if we were like the towers, the towers are important to us. They're a legacy of the boardwalk. What's it going to take to get the tower towers done? Then we can kind of start looking at okay, do we need a new approval for that? Or can we do it under our maintenance plan? Um, and then we can, based on that, start seeking grants. Um, so it, it's under discussion item simply because I, I just kind of wanted a sense of where this group wants to go with their next steps. Do we think that we need to repair the sections that are currently closed? Should we address sections that are just landing? Or do we want to hit these bigger attraction areas like like the towers, for example. Um, does that make sense? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. 
Hans is nodding, but Hans and I hang out too much, yeah, so I don't know. What that's the big first thing is no, there's not a jar because that's how you can start. Right. Here's a jar of money. How you guys want to spend? What is the recommendation? There's the dollars are here. That's not the case, but it is important that we get things lined up or thought about already ahead of time when money becomes available suddenly, or we put efforts with you guys into finding money specific for those projects. Um, to put contest to that, it's having a shovel project, yes. shovel ready project, ready rather than looking for That's right. Yes. Uh, just before I go to Doug, there was, uh, and I, I apologize for that. You may have mentioned this and I missed it, but uh, part of it is to talk about um, whether we need to get new AP applications in. Yes. Um, so if when we go we make our list, um, so for example, things like if we were to do, I'm just trying to pick something off this list. I guess the tower will likely require a new approval, right? Or if we want to fix that section that's slumping off the classroom where there's no piles anymore, that's going to likely be new approval, right? So, or if you're we like, oh, we want to rip this section out. We don't want to replace it. And we want to build a new section. That's going to be a new approval. So I think it's definitely worthwhile for us to start kind of creating two categories of what we would like to do when we have a new approval and the things we can do with grant money under the current maintenance approval. And then to move forward perhaps with it with an additional approval because that, that takes about a year. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, Heather, you ran over them really quickly, just uh, each one of the features and how they correspond to the, uh, on the map, um, just for someone like me, who's not as familiar as some of you guys, could you just do that again, just so I can take some notes on the map as to, you yeah. know, which, where each one of those features correspond to? Yeah, I'm actually going to turn that over to Hans, uh, because he does a way better job of being in the map than me. So okay. do you have a map visual for the group then? Yeah, so everybody has this map because that's the one that we had. So if you want to tell them where the tower is, where the picnic tables go. So if we go in chronological order, uh, the tower, um, the one tower in the west that has been demolished is at the end of the blue little section that uh, ends at uh, six. Six is the uh, pond where the beavers are. And the tower that you saw in the presentation from uh, Beth as well is the one tower that's been uh, taken down and was at the end of that blue section. The other tower, of course, in, on the other side is a tower that still, uh, let's say, has been sh uh, shored and, and strengthened with uh, additional bracings. So it's in, let's say, fair uh, condition. That's uh, on the uh, east side of the lake. The picnic tables, so when you take a look at the uh, map and you see there the Maxwell Lake itself with the uh, ice oval on it, basically it's the northwest corner where people come from the apartments and there's the picnic tables on the gravel. Uh, over most of the time there's two or four picnic tables standing there as uh, the blue temporary ones from, uh, or temporary, the blue ones from parks. The additional open classroom, the idea was to put something, let's say in the area of sections uh, where uh, D and uh, basically C where they are intersection, that area for a secondary open classroom, either being an addition to the boardwalk itself, or let's say a branch off the same as the classroom it's uh, right now, just the step of the boardwalk basically in that area. Rhyme Drive entrance is the, uh, you cannot see it on the map. It's just the north side over there where the blue fence at the uh, photograph. It's that entrance area, which is a uh, uh, grass sloped area coming down from Rhymer uh, Drive itself towards the uh, boardwalk where it starts to basically go to the lower tower section or to section A and to grab to, to the trail section the trail connection so that's the grass area over there the dock of course is at the end of if you extend section e basically uh, under the w of uh, maxwell lake the current closed sections west loop j and k so that's clear that's on the west side of your paper in uh, area number five section a is also very clear that's that section that beth talked about as well 
coming from Rhymer Drive and uh, along or slash in the shore, uh, lake shore over there. And the West connection to the bridge is section ball we talked about a couple of times from the bridge towards the classroom. So Doug, we also have, um, I did ask Hans to dig up the Maxwell Lake air, rec area plan um, simply because it had a little, a lot of really good visuals in it, uh, but I didn't think it was appropriate to include it in the agenda because it wasn't formally adopted by council. And I didn't want to send that impression without chatting with the group. So when I send Beth's um, presentation around to everyone, I can also send um, the Maxwell Lake rec area plan to be clear, not adopted by council. It's currently sitting on a shelf. Um, just so that people can give that a read and maybe that'll help spark some of your ideas to inform how we want to move forward in um, choosing where we're going to put our efforts over the next couple of years. Yeah, I'd say any additional maps would be very helpful as long as everything is kind of called the same thing so we can speak the same thing. Uh, I recall at the last meeting there, uh, Hans and um, Jan, you guys were talking about doing something along those lines. Yeah, I just got some data today from Hans, but I've been extremely busy for the past week or so, so I haven't had to do it. Um, yeah, to me, I think the focus would be on on the boardwalk parts, like things like another classroom. I don't know if we really need that at this point. Like I would be focusing, well, like what what's happening to the two sections that weren't done this year, kind of putting them aside, don't know where they follow. But to me, in terms of connectivity, the, the boardwalk between the bridge and the outdoor classroom isn't very long. And that would be a high priority for connectivity and dispersing people all through the, um, the boardwalk experience as well. And that tower, I think getting that tower up is a, should be right up front on a, on a um, priority list. So I'll just start with those two. There's a whole lot more, but I, I guess I would focus on on trying to repair, keep the you know repair the repair the boardwalk and get the tower up before you start sort of like some of the picnic tables. Are you just replacing them? Or you just want four more picnic tables or something? Like they can't be that expensive. Yeah, yeah, out of the plan from the, uh, let's say the Maxwell Lake area plan, it was permanent picnic tables, uh, concrete maybe even something like that's more permanent that class would happen over there, maybe in a shelter of sunlight, sun yeah. shelters. Location that we stick it where we are, or we can put some more across the way. And that, that moment, that plan had that location to spruce up that location. I'd spend money first on getting the boardwalk up to, up to stuff before I started investing in that kind of infrastructure myself. Yeah. I made my priority for this. Can I go to Trevor? Thanks. I was just wanted to second what Beth said was that I'd I'd like to focus on getting some of the closed down sections back up before we start looking at adding additional features. But I was also wondering uh, the dock, if someone could provide a little bit of history on the use of the dock, um, just with uh, the mandate that they're discouraging uh, water activity in the summer months, just what was the purpose of the dock? Is that just for kind of a touch point to the water? Someone could expand on that, that'd be awesome. So Trevor, are you asking about the history of the dock or future future plans for it? I guess future plans. Um, what I guess what what's the idea with the dock? I think the idea of the dock was just to give the, the people a chance to uh, stand there and take it all in and look at that little piece of the ecosystem. It's called the water deck. It's not a dock. It was right from the beginning a deck. So it's it's a water deck <laughs> for that kind of experience. Ball. Yeah, it was like so you yeah. walk out on your deck and you you okay. exactly got that. Yeah. yeah. But so, instead of a deck on your yard, right? So so maybe as clarification, I don't know what the change was, but it was built as a boardwalk. So basically a wider section at the end of a boardwalk stretch. And when it started to sink and, and had to be replaced, it also had uh, became uh, with the railings. So I'm not sure 
what at that moment the decision was, but uh, became railings as well. So that's something to this to consider. Hey, does it need to have railings? Yay or nay? How would you see that back? Uh, if you take a dock, dock deck, as in the Athabasca <laughs> River front park where it's to get canoes in and out. That's just a dock without, of course, uh, any railings because people use uh, to get up to the water. So just the difference with how it was, how it changed and how it's not there. So the second part of that question was regarding future plans. Is there any yeah. thought to what's happening with that? I think that depends on where we put it on. Right now? Yeah. Well, short of the committee, I mean, short of the committee, is there anything or I think you know, in the plans for no for no because we be done on it or anything yeah no because we saw it as a closed item so our maintenance dollars were not supposed to go to closed sections to open it up so that's why it's, it's not part of maintenance okay so how do you want to do this, Heather? Like uh, I've made my, I've numbered my list. Is that something? I think I want to send around. Well, first of all, Doug has a question. Yeah, we go yeah there first? I'm, I'm just going to remind everybody we need to try and go through the chair because I was waiting for Hans to respond and then I was going to go to Doug. So I'm going to go to Doug and then I'll come back. You okay, Jan? Oh, someone said. Doug. All right. So my input is I'll, I'll kind of echo what uh, Beth and Trevor said about uh, restoring older pieces of boardwalk before making new and, and my two picks uh, out of the list that was provided would be one would be the tower overlooking the lodge. The reason why I suggest that one is because even though it's closed, I still see children on that very often. So if it's something that we are concerned about not being particularly stable, that would be a worry of mine. And not only is it a very nice feature, if it were to be refurbished, you know, it gives you a great view of the boardwalk, but I do see kids on it very frequently. And uh, it does make me worry about it a little bit. Uh, the other one would be the dock, uh, same thing. It's also a really great natural viewpoint once you get over to the lake there, but it also seems very wobbly. So I, I would also wonder how much life uh, that thing can be used safely as well. Okay. Yeah, so I'm hearing what everyone's saying today. I think I do want to let everyone um, review that previous plan so that it can spark even more ideas. Um, I'm totally open to having those sent through the chair by email so that we can, um, I can have kind of a plan prepared for how to prioritize. So depending on what I get sent in, I'll have a bit of a presentation, maybe some sticky note activities for us to be able to really prioritize those and then separate out perhaps a timeline, uh, maybe a couple of years out as to where we want to put those items. Um, because for example, the tower itself, that's going to be, unless we come up with an insane, insanely creative idea, that's going to be a new approval. So that one at least has to go into 2023, right? Um, but I love crazy ideas. So if anybody's got one. Doug, did you have another comment or question, or is, is your hand still up for before? No, nope, sorry. Uh, no, that was it. Okay, no problem. Uh, Jan? Do I ask that we split the towers into two different things? Yeah, each tower is its own tower. Is that what you mean? Each tower has its own priority ranking? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because okay, I, they as much as I, I like Doug's point about the, the making it safe, yeah. but building up the other one, I might have that in a different priority. Yep. Yep, they're separate features. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um. Yeah. I just. Huh. The tower. Oh, yeah. My question. Uh, where does the two sections, which um, the contractor couldn't do this summer fall, like, where, where do we, what do we do with them? Yeah. So that's section. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And L. That's section L and section B. Right. So. Section L, the first section from the trail yeah. towards, let's say, when you're uh, off, the, off the water, the lower pond over there. And then section B from the dock towards where the letter B is almost. Yeah. So those would be put on the list, right? And we'll decide when we think we should do them, but um, they will be their own sections, just like they are here, right. and deciding where they, they fall in the grand scheme of everything. So we should add them to our list right now. Well, that was a given for me, but yeah. yeah. So anything you guys want to send, send. Um, I will include anything that doesn't come across in email. I won't include unless it's brought forward by admin as a priority um, so that we can at least have you guys evaluate those. 
Does that process make sense to everybody? I guess I'd ask when yeah. we would undertake that exercise. I'm thinking next meeting. The next meeting? Yeah. Okay. So does the process leading up to next meeting make sense to everyone then? Doug? Uh, Heather, when you say crazy idea to keep it within the existing approval, uh, can you clarify what you mean by that? Oh, Hans, that'll go to Hans. Crazy ideas that would keep it in the... So because the, the piles right now are in the wetland, if we wanted to replace those piles, they're, they're, we know that it's too mushy there to do that. So by crazy ideas, if it's not impacting the wetland, we can do the work. So something that Hans and I kind of joke about is like suspending a platform from trees, right? Um, ridiculous, but an idea nonetheless. So those kinds of things that would allow us to work within our current approval, um, because right now to take the piles and replace them, there was a reason Hans, was it the cost of those piles or a different kind of pile? Yes, it would be a total different construction, a yeah. foundation into the lake, because you're talking about a platform right. and a way bigger road. Um, so yeah, the, the difference is it has to be in the wetland or it's going to be on the slope, both as a building construction wetland approval. Yeah. Crazy would be to stay upland out of the slope that no silt or whatever will run off into the wetland. Now you're talking about, uh, let's say, meters and meters away from the shoreline. Uh, which, so which would be maybe a crazy idea, but maybe a possible ability. Yeah, like the shoreline is mm -hmm. the repair here and close to the wetland, so it's probably so many meters to even get that. So, yeah. So, I, think yes. um, I just want to clarify like this, this proposal has eight sections, and then I kind of asked about L and B as well, but there's a whole lot more sections. In blue here that aren't on the, this. So are we considering the whole thing or just these eight and the two? So consider your whole area plus what I send you in the Maxwell Lake report. Oh um, yeah. and, and that list that I put on the agenda was just to kind of formulate a conversation around the types of items. Okay. Um, so yeah, how whatever's within our area, we want to know if you guys want to tackle it. Okay, so this is just going to be just a priority list, and we, you know, we do our best. Like, say, say we have something at a medium priority or a lower priority in the next two years. All of a sudden, we realize, oh my gosh, we need to do immediate repairs, and we just adjust based on the actual physical condition of the that part of the boardwalk. Yeah, because I'm just I'm just thinking, what's yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Matt. I don't know. Yeah. If so very clear. similar to what happened with Hans's project this year, right? We thought yeah. we had a bang on plan and then weather happens. So we have to then take our priority list and reprioritize that list. Yeah. Um, but to the point that was made earlier, we really want to, whatever's at the front of our priority list, we need to start getting some plans and projects and approvals in place to do those things. Um, so that when the grant money comes, we have something ready. So that's kind of what we're looking to. But what wasn't there um, sort of a ranking of condition of the boardwalk? Like these need immediate repairs. Well, these uh, these are okay for the next three years, and these are way down the road. Was is there something like that that exists? Thank you. So that's basically what we do with the maintenance for the open sections. Yeah. Okay. So we're only focusing on maintenance that we look into prioritizing. Oh, this has to be done this year. That can wait maybe a couple of years. But that's only for the open sections. I think it's important that we, with this group, have yes, open sections, but also include this closed sections right. okay. and also include the new kind of maybe ideas. Right. Is there a document that shows the open sections in the priority maintenance sections? So basically what's you know imminently failing compared to what's in pretty good shape. Like the, the report you brought last meeting where it said, you know, this is forecast to be required to be replaced within the next three years. Like, do we have something like that? Yeah. That could have. be forwarded to the committee. So that would help with that discussion that we have in April. Yeah, we can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be like. Anyway, my, my initial question, my first question to you is, uh, 
do we know with the the, the the permissions that we have from AP right now, do we know what is possible right now out of these lists and what isn't? Yeah, so that's part of, oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, yep. Yeah. So that's part of <clears throat> when I get the list from everybody, I'm probably going to color code something so that you guys can see this is absolutely possible under our current approvals. Maybe this color is, is, is not, but if we tweak it and put it on floats, boom, we can get it done. Right. And then these ones would totally require a new approval unless somebody has an idea I didn't think of. And, and then my second thing, if uh, is getting back to what we're discussing here, like this L and B and, and open versus closed and the prioritizing, because one would think that the stuff that's closed right now is closed because it's dead on unsafe. Whereas like if I walk L every day and I don't I don't even see what the problem is really. I don't, I mean, it must be something is leaning or slanting or something. You yes. know what I mean? But so yeah. then it's like, well, yeah, I we really need that priority. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have a, a plan to prep for a deeper discussion on this in April. Any other comments or questions then before we move on? Okay. Uh, that brings us to 5.0 information items. 5.1 is the phone list. That's the uh, contact list that was distributed. Yep. Um, I did. I, I'm not sure what everybody else thinks, but I was kind of expecting that it was going to be a fuller list. That it wouldn't be just a public uh, citizen. The appointments on that list that you know I would be on there, you would be on there, Chad would be on there. I thought about putting it on, but then I was like, is that redundant? Because everybody has our emails with our contact information in there as well. But I can add it. And then the other question is, I need everybody's permission before I can post these this agenda with everybody's phone and email. Um, so I'll need a written email. Um, saying that you're okay with that if, if we want to post this, unless we want it as an internal document for ourselves. So my contact information is out there in public anyway, yeah. but yeah. so I'm not speaking for myself, but I would prefer that that's a document that's kept to the committee. Mm -hmm. well, that, that, that that's really necessary for it to be out there for the public to have access to everyone's emails and phone numbers. I would agree. Um, especially as we move forward with this committee, perhaps we pick projects that members of the public are not that fired up about, and they need to direct those concerns through admin, through the CAO to council, get in front of council as a delegation. They can, of course, come and speak with you guys if they see you in passing, but I just don't want anybody getting really nasty phone calls or anything like that. Yeah, I hate to be a, a devil's advocate here. We're an engagement committee. That's true. And we are putting our agendas and stuff out there for people to view. So do we not, if someone sees something or has a concern, can they not reach someone from the council? And can it, and maybe they don't want to reach a no offense, maybe they don't want to reach an admin person or council. Maybe they want to Yeah. So one of the things um, that we did with SIAC was we created a SIAC email that actually flows to all of your independent emails, but that nobody sees those emails. So Gary in IT can set that up for us so that they can go to the website. It says um, BBOC committee at Hinton.ca or whatever, and it will filter to everybody's email. Um, and when you reply, it just replies back with the BBOC email, not your personal email. So then that keeps all of your personal data and stuff out of it. So we can absolutely facilitate that if that's what we want to. Makes sense. And that will be added to the agenda, uh, to every agenda at the top. What, what would be added? That, that email address. Yeah. So if someone looks at the agenda and says, I want to contact someone, how do I contact oh, them? They'll sure. see the email. Yeah, but on the website right now, we also have a spot for our agendas for our minutes. And then we would also add a line. This is like email, see out here. But yeah, we can toss it on the agenda. But they would never make it to the agenda without seeing that email by going through the website. So, and it's up to the committee too. If you guys, if the committee, everyone on the committee is comfortable with having the information shared, I don't have any problem. Like I said, my, my contact info is already out there anyway. So it was more looking out for the privacy of you guys. And like, like Heather was saying, you don't want to get a 
phone call at 11 o'clock at night because somebody took a tumble on the beaver boardwalk and they want to yell at you for why, why maintenance isn't being done or something i don't yeah. know so that's a discussion for you guys to have i i think with that one though we'd likely have to have unanimous consent for everybody's numbers to be posted otherwise it's like we couldn't be Beth? i was just thinking this would be useful for a group because i've got some some people's phone numbers and some not like to me, that's what the use of this is, like with everybody's contacts. So, you know, we can we just communicate easily. Okay. Trevor? I like Heather's idea of just having a, a general email for the whole committee that gets sent out. Uh, I think even just for the longevity of this group, that it makes sense. If I'm not on this committee in a few years, I don't want to have emails coming my way. Good point. But I don't I don't mind the list being shared internally for sure. I think that's important. But yeah, I, I just think for a public facing that it should be one email address. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Doug. I, I agree with what Trevor was saying there. That's also what I'd like to see. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like we've got a few people that aren't comfortable sharing it publicly. So do we want to keep no, I think we'll just go with that plan. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Can I get a motion about the email so I can? I'd like to make that? a motion to make a one email for all. One email to rule them all. <laughs> Trevor, please put it in the minutes like that. Yeah. Right? Like that. Just like that. Yeah. And uh, please add it to the agenda, even though know, this may not make sense. <laughs> I hope you can capture that in a way that does make sense, Trevor. <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion to create a POC uh, email address that will filter out to everybody. Uh, any comments or discussion on that? Okay, so nobody, all those in favor? Opposed? No, okay, that's carried unanimously. Okay, so we will get that set up. Um, so back to my original point about the phone list though, uh, and feeding back to what we were talking about earlier at the beginning of the meeting about a bit of confusion about who even the admin reps are. I'd like to have that phone list filled out a little bit more. And obviously the admin people don't expect you to put your cell numbers on there, just your office numbers are fine, unless you're comfortable with your with your cell numbers on there. But uh, maybe the, the title of the admin rep their name and their contact info uh, and myself too. And then we've got all the official uh, members as mandated in the terms of reference for who this committee consists of. Is everybody okay if I just circulate that with the plans um, that are to go out as well? Because um, mm -hmm. like we said, we're not gonna post it as part of the agenda. I'm gonna pull that out before I post the agenda. Okay, is okay with that? Okay. Okay, anything else about the uh, contact list? Okay, uh, brings us to board boardwalk map with sections. Not sure how much more we need to discuss that. We've gotten that in our agenda. We've already referred to it. So any comments or questions about it though? So is this, um, does anyone have any comments on how it's, how the, like, are we, I, let me try that again. We are going to accept this labeling as the rule from now on, because I, as Heather may or may, I can't remember, if you were here. I, I want to make a map, like yeah. big maps for people to have in their houses. And I want, you know, I want a consistent way of. Yeah, this was just an action item from last meeting. And I knew that you guys didn't have enough time. So I didn't want to leave us nothing to refer to for this meeting. Yeah. So I want your big, much better map. Um, oh, and I don't, it doesn't matter to admin how it gets labeled, but it is important. I think that um, sections of board, like how we've kind of called things sections and then each piece of board won't gets like a different number of letter. Um, but yeah, this was just for the purpose of facilitating today's conversation. I really look forward to the map that you guys will create because it'll be better than what we have here. Hans, does it, because you produced other maps for other documents that have your own, just, what do you say about this? 
do I have any, do you have anything that I should be keeping consistent with, with you? With different numbers and stuff like that? So yeah. I think so. No, no, I think it's smart to keep this. Okay. This is how it started two years ago, with public feedback. Only sections are not lettered here. So maybe you have to progress with the alphabet yeah. and saying, okay, this one here, because we talk about it so many times, and this one here. And then from that moment on, we might ditch the whole numbered section confusion and just mm -hmm. go by the alphabet like we have here. That's what I think. Okay, I'll look, I'll, I can come up with a few different options that people can. Thanks. Uh, Trevor and Doug, did you guys, I probably saw your hands up. Are you guys okay? Yeah, I have the topographic map from our survey that we did. Uh, with my company, but I thought it was for the town of Hinton, but I see it was for Associated Environmental. So I'll have to follow up with them if I can share the data first to assist with the map. Trevor, do you work for McElhaney? Yes. Yeah, that's right. I think I think we have that already because we work with Associated and then Associated contract to you guys. Is that what happened once? No. They did the it would have been work for the town ultimately, but I guess I'll have to get uh, associated uh, permission to share the data, the raw data, I guess. Okay. I was going to say, I like what Trevor had because it, it was really very detailed and broken down into a length of each segment as well. That was good. Yeah. Okay, so is Trevor making the map? <laughs> no, we, we definitely want to see your map. On oh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like for real, if he's got something, I mean, he's a surveyor for Christ's Well, that's it's really just a map. You start with like the base thing, but then someone has to be inventive and really come up with evocative names for each section, right? Okay, yeah. No, I'm just saying uh, again. I know how I know what mapping is, um, but my point is, if he's already got something, there's maybe there's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. So I don't I have to look at what he has. Um, well, my, my suggestion then would be if Trevor can confirm, or maybe if Heather can confirm, if she thinks that's already with the town's purview, then that would be a really good base data set to start with that then can be labeled and named and et cetera. Trevor, I'm going to call you and we'll talk about it and then we'll follow up with y'all. Yeah, we're not good. naming everything to you so much. I really like the point about the, uh, uh, the length of the sections being indicated on there though too. Ooh. So if there was a key off to the side somewhere that had the length of the set, each name section. Something like that. Right. Anyway, but yeah. So is that that's okay then? Heather, you'll connect with Trevor and uh, outside the meeting, and then uh, connect with with Jan. Do you have a phone number? <laughs> On the list. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else about the map? Okay. Plan moving forward with the map. Apologies, uh, BBOC membership advertising. Yes, sorry. I'm sorry, it's just all me today. Um, so at the last meeting, you guys had asked me to follow up with what positions were open, which one was vacated, what applications we have in. I have an email open right here. <clears throat> so we have three available positions right now. One of them is the youth representative, the Aboriginal representative, um, and Vivian filled the spot of the environmental rep. So, and we have received one application for the youth rep. So that came from the youth advisory committee. Um, and we have that sitting ready to go, ready to be appointed to council. I'm just wondering if we wanna do that now or wait to do them in a bunch. I will have to talk to Paul about it regardless about when it fits into the agenda and he's away till Monday. Um, but yeah, so those are the three positions that are available. So if you guys want to start um, chatting with people, getting them to apply the applications, I can have them reopened on the website. No, they they are open. Um, so you can just direct them there. So what do you need from the committee then? It was just an update that they asked for what was, what was open. And at the last one, we said we wanted to be appointing people um, as soon as possible. So those are the three positions that are currently open. And the youth one technically remains open until council chooses someone. Yes, 
Um, are these going to be advertised in the paper or just open on the website? Yeah, so that's something that uh, Councillor Astashi and I talked about when we made the agenda. So I, out of communications, have a little bit of budget to do general advertising like this. So I'm going to run these ones um, and hopefully we get like people from that. Uh, but if it ends up being on a continual basis, then I might have to yeah, circle see. back and perhaps change our methods. No, does the town have any official connections, communications with the friendship center? Official communications? Some way, I don't we know. Do, any, we I do don't... have channels. They're not official, but we do. Yep. Yeah. Can we use yeah. them? Yep. Yeah. We, we did. Um, oh. And no one was interested. But my understanding over there is that they've they've had a period of change within their community through COVID. Um, and so it's kind of limited what they what they could do, especially at the time that we were appointing this committee. So uh, we'll circle back. Yeah. Do we need any direction? No, we got the direction at the, at the last one. This was just a... So okay. just to, oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, what, 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 what what did Vivian have that made her the environmental rep? And I'm asking that and try to get an idea of what you have to have to be an environmental yeah, rep. Yeah, um, I don't have it off the top of my head. Okay, I have it, I guess. Do you have all the applications you want? Oh, the no, I have the uh, terms of Oh, I thought you meant Vivian specifically. No, well, I was curious as to what oh. she, I thought she was here as a representative of someone who lived on Collins or you know, something like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, what's the what would be the criteria that would qualify somebody as the environment? Yeah, we did list them in the terms of reference. I think it's like if you were in forestry or if you're a biologist or yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. Oh, look at me with my memory. Environmental representative, a town of Hinton resident who holds one or more following qualities, characteristics, or qualification. Environmental professional. Example: biologist, hydrologist, forestry. That's it. Oh, that, that's it's it. very interesting. It's, uh, we tried to keep the that language have the really. the qualities of a forester. Yeah, a quality. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wears flat. He wears. He wears. He carries an That's it. Okay. Interesting. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So, if anybody knows anybody that might be interested that fits the uh, qualifications, yeah, encourage them to submit an application. Okay. Scrolling around there. Uh, okay, so that's that next meeting date is for Wednesday, April 15th, 2022. No? Can I add uh, an agenda item to that, please? Or the, yeah, sure. Just so that Heather maybe can write it down now before I forget it. So much okay. space I'd like to have, if we can, or, or the next agenda, if it's too full. Is weight wayfinding signs along all over the boardwalk? I have sent a, a few letters to uh, town admin and council of people getting lost. I've, I've run into nine different couples that were lost, including a very old couple, and it was 10 minutes away from being dark. And they were at the very, very south section almost to head up the whole big one. So I've asked, and I, I brought this to council, and as far as I know, nothing's been done. I was told by our, well, she's still the CEO, Emily, that she didn't think that it fell within our realm, and I just want to have a chat and see if maybe it does. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I've added it to the list, Jan. Signage is on the list of recommendations. Um, so it would fall at this table. I'll add it to that prioritization list because I know there's grants available for that. So, uh, I already provided one agenda potential item regarding the parking lot sign. I have a second one, also a small one. Uh, the dock that we were talking about earlier, I noticed it does have a pair of bucket piles underneath it right now, and they're not in very good shape. So I'm wondering if you guys have any information as to when they were installed so that we can maybe learn a couple of lessons about them as to why they may not have worked as much as we would have hoped a pile like that would have. Uh, 
I wrote it down. Clear, we'll take a look. Yeah. Yeah. The bucket file, I mean, they have, it looks like they have screw files right now, but just with a bucket top is what I meant. Sorry. It looks like they are screw files right now. That's what I was meaning to say the bucket top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just note that um, out of interest, just a general interest, if you look at the holes that they dug for the seeing if there's water, there's animals going in. So I think there's animals going in under the ice, and I would bet the, those beavers are in trouble. Oh, like, uh, like fox or stuff. whatever. They probably would get right in there. So I don't know. Next time it's yeah. done, maybe those should be covered up, or maybe they should be covered up now. But there's definitely the one that's yes, the one that's right at um, right where the the, the south uh, entrance to L. There's a hole on the on the right hand side, and it's got little footprints all around it. Are they like little fox prints? Fox, smaller oh. than a fox. So I was thinking like a mink or a yeah. ermine or something like that. Maybe I'll go over to yeah. yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to add that as a gem. No, that's fine. No, that's that's good actually. Yeah. So if that is if that's a thing, you should. What did you say the mechanism is for recording the? So, trees and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so you can either, if it's the committee, you guys can email me directly or just do info at hinton.ca, and then that goes to our whole team of incoms and we'll get it to the right people. So, Chad. So, if that's something that should be addressed, it could get addressed yeah. pretty quick here. Yeah. So, do I need to send an email? Well, if you put it in through um, info or request tracker, it automatically goes to ISP and automatically gets a Ticket number. Okay. Um, tonight. And then it doesn't sit on my desk. But I am willing to check them that do for across my desk. Okay. Anything else for next meeting? Okay. Uh, so nothing else. If there's uh, oh well, I want to I'm thinking about uh Kevin. Kevin, Kevin? We are yeah. concerned about him and uh, there's two meetings now that he hasn't been able to make it. Oh, I did. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. Do we need to maybe revisit what time we have meetings or something? I did to reach out try to, to help the guy out. Or, I know offer, I saw that. Oh, to offer the option of a call in. Um, but I would say we don't want to have the conversation about changing the meeting without chatting with Kevin. So I was just waiting to see oh, if yeah. he yeah. Yeah. I, I was intending to reach out to him to individually and okay. see if there's something else that would work better. Oh, yeah. And then we can discuss it. So yeah, we can definitely have that conversation down, down the road for us. So, okay. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. Uh, if there's nothing further, then we look for a motion to adjourn. I'd make that motion to adjourn said meeting, therefore, about now. All right, Jan moves to adjourn. Um, all those in favor? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming today.